Starfield, Starfield, Starfield. The biggest Xbox exclusive since probably Halo 3. The biggest new Xbox IP since Gears of War. And Bethesda's biggest release since joining Xbox is finally upon us. I know Xbox fans are anticipating not only playing the game, but seeing what the review scores will be. And I've had a huge monumental task in front of me to talk about my feelings of Starfield, this game that is absolutely huge, packed to the gills with content, things that will last you hundreds upon hundreds of hours if you play it certain ways. And, well, I don't know how I'm going to approach this. I'm just going to do stream of consciousness thoughts, give you kind of where I felt in the beginning and where I ended up at the end because we go on a journey guys we absolutely go on a journey and maybe that was the whole point right traveling between the stars because initially the journey was quite mediocre oh man if that doesn't hook you in i don't know what will because the journey ended up being spectacular but for a long time there i was a little bit worried that we were getting kind of just an okay game but first off but first off i have to thank bethesda for sending over a review code because i wasn't expecting one so yeah if you guys enjoyed this video make sure you hit the like button and please subscribe if you're new i honestly don't even know where i'm gonna start off with this video i'll just say don't worry there are going to be no spoilers in fact the video that's going to be playing during this is literally the beginning of the game because i want you guys to experience the game the way i did where I didn't know anything going into it outside of watching the direct, seeing the footage, because it was all brand new. I want you guys to have those moments of wonder and awe that I did while playing through certain faction quest lines or the main quest. Or when you land on a barren planet but look up in the night sky and see an absolutely huge Saturn-like planet with its rings almost touching the planet that you're on. And you just say to yourself, damn, that looks so cool. Now, I know everybody has a different history with Bethesda games. And I know everybody plays their Bethesda games differently than everybody else. So I'm going to have to explain how I'm coming into it, my history with Bethesda. I have played Fallout 3. I have played Oblivion and Skyrim. Those are the three Bethesda games I played. I have not played Fallout 4. And let me tell you... I like Bethesda games, but I don't love Bethesda games. My favorite one is Skyrim, and I don't particularly care for the post-apocalyptic nature of the Fallout series. So I'm someone that just enjoys playing through these games, playing through the faction quests, playing through the main stories, and that's pretty much it. So if you're here looking for a comprehensive review of all of Starfield systems, from the exploration of the thousand planets, or from the modding and the crafting and the shipbuilding and all the other stuff you can do in this game, this is not going to be the review for you. Because what I wanted from Starfield was a great story with fantastic side quests, good dialogue with great voice acting, tight gameplay, and ship combat. I wasn't looking to explore the universe or make my own ship or build outposts. So essentially what I'm saying is I didn't build a single outpost and if the main quest or any of the side quests didn't take me to a planet, I didn't go there. I only went to the places that had missions and I didn't go traipsing across the universe. I only went where the stories were. I play these games and when I'm done with the quest, I'm done with the game. So if you're really interested in learning more about the exploration, like if you can actually walk around the planet, this isn't going to be the video for you. If you're mad that you can't walk on the surface of the sun or land on a gas giant, well, this isn't going to be the video for you either. So I say all that just to say that I play these games for the quests. And I just want you guys to know that before we begin. And right off the bat, when the game drops you in and you get to kind of feel it out, one of the things that's going to stand out to you are the graphics. Some places, they are extremely good. Really good. When you land on a planet and see some of the train, you look up in the sky and see the different stars out there. It really does fill you with a sense of wonder. Or when you're talking to somebody on a planet, just their facial animations can just hit right, even though the eyes can be a little bit dead. When you're walking around New Atlantis and looking at the vistas, it can actually be an awesome visual experience. However, it's not always the case, because there's certainly times in the big cities, like Neon, New Atlantis, 
where you'll see a bunch of NPCs together. And man, it just does not look good. Their facial features kind of leave a lot to desire. So in some parts, the game looks absolutely fantastic. I love the sci-fi setting. I love how different each of the worlds look. New Atlantis, for example, looks completely different than the Blade Runner-esque style of Neon or the frontier world of the Free Ranger Collective. It's so cool jumping into these different places in a sci-fi setting for each one of the major cities, like Cydonia on Mars. It's a mining planet, so the big city there looks like it's filled with a bunch of miners going about their daily life. And then there's the performance. We know the game is locked at 30 frames on the Series X, which is what I played it on and the only system I played it on. I don't really have a capable PC, and I'm not a PC gamer, and I don't have the Series S. So it's locked at 30 frames, and I was surprised by how good it actually felt to play the game at 30 frames. I played Redfall for a little bit, and the 30 frames there was god-awful, it felt a lot better here. Obviously not ideal. I would rather play everything at 60 frames, but the 30 frames here felt good, and it really didn't deter from anything I wanted to do. Although sometimes, especially when running through cities, running through the Freestar Collective City, or running through Neon, there would be some moments of frame rate droppage. And I'm not Digital Foundry. I don't always catch the minutia of a frame rate dropping from 30 to 28, but I will know when it drops down from 30 to 15. And that did happen a few times during my playthrough. Now, of course, it's bug Thesda, right? We know that Microsoft has delayed this game over a year, and I think it's a better game for it. I think performance is better. I think it looks better because of the delay, but what about the bugs? Did I have any? Yes, I did have a few. Notably, I had the bald glitch quite a few times where the characters suddenly didn't have any facial hair or hair at all. It happened a few times for me, and I always found it funny. I was laughing about it. They did fix it in a patch this week, so hopefully you guys don't encounter it. I had one instance of people not wearing any clothes except for their underwear. I had some instances where you would talk to somebody, and you know how it zooms in on the character, but then somebody would run across that viewing area and kind of disrupt what was going on. I've had a couple missions sort of glitch out where the character would walk to the wrong spot and I couldn't continue without loading it and have the character go somewhere else. So I maybe had a handful of glitches, but like I said, I'm not somebody who plays these Bethesda games a lot and notices the minutia of all the different glitches. I will say it was nice only having a couple and not being locked out of any large quests. So let's get into the meat and potatoes of this because I said in the beginning of the video, I was quite concerned with this game because it does start off very mediocre. I was shocked by how much fun I was not having and in fact, how bored I was. But I'm explain to you why by the end, I ended up loving this game. And I end up thinking that potentially this might be my game of the year. And if my friends are listening to this, they know I love sci-fi. And yes, it has to do with the sci-fi nature of the game, the things they're doing in the main story. But in the beginning, when they throw you to the wolves, the game, just has so much going into it you're trying to remember the inventory the different weapons and then you get introduced to the ship combat and all the stuff with that you get dropped onto a planet and one of the things i noticed right away is how segmented the game is like when you enter your ship there's a loading screen when you go into a building in new atlantis it's a loading screen if you want to get to a different section in New Atlantis, if you want to go from the spaceport to the commercial district, you have to take a tram, which is a loading screen. And when you enter a building there, it's a loading screen. And when you enter a building there, it's a loading screen. My biggest complaint in the beginning of the game and my biggest complaint throughout the entire experience is all of the loading. There is so much loading. You know, when you get a quest and you need to leave, you can essentially walk to your ship, take the tram, load, get into your ship, load because your ship is unique you build out all these different things that you can have and it's your home away from home i understand why there's so much loading but a lot of times it takes you out of it especially because you just want to get to what you want to do i just want to do this mission but they put five or six load screens in front of you it can kind of break the immersion so you enter your ship and there's a load screen you take off 
and it's a cutscene. You're flying in front of the planet you just were on. You set a course for the Soul System. You want to go visit Mars. Guess what? It's a cutscene for the grab drive. Now you're in front of Mars, and you want to land. Guess what? There's a landing cutscene. Oh, you want to leave your ship? That's a cutscene. Now you want to enter Sidonia on Mars, the big city? That is a loading screen to get into there, right? There's just a whole collection of loading screens between you and the things you want to do, and it's something that persisted throughout my entire experience and is my biggest complaint with the game, honestly. Not to mention when you're on a planet's surface and you're going around New Atlantis or Cydonia and you want to see the different shops, whether to buy new guns or medical supplies or perhaps clothing, there's no map. This isn't Mass Effect where you can see where each shop is. You have to discover it. And that's the other thing that kind of took me out of it was I want to know where things are, but I don't have a map for it. And then where do I get these quests? Because the beginning of the game, outside of all the loading and all the stuff they throw on top of you, the quests and the activities that they gave you were not good. They were just go here, do this, come back. And I was thinking about, there's got to be more than this. I was very disappointed playing through it. But it got so much better. Because the more I played Starfield, the more I understood what it was trying to do. When I sort of got over the disappointment where you cannot travel if you're outside of Earth in your ship and you want to travel to Mars, you can't do it manually. It's just basically a cutscene, right? So initially I was thinking, oh, well, it'd be cool to fly from Earth to the moon. And I don't even think you can do that. So once I got over that and I got into the actual meat and potatoes of the experience, I wanted from Starfield because like I mentioned I don't care about exploring I don't care about building outposts I want the main story and the faction quest and once I got into those once I got into the United Colonies Vanguard and the Crimson Fleet and Ryujin and the Freestar Collective and once I started the main story after it picks up a bit because yeah the beginning is kind of like you're looking for artifacts and that could be a tad boring. Oh boy, did this game start rising up the scale for me. So even though the game suffered from a mediocre beginning and eventually got way, way better, one of the things that I felt was damn good from the start was the combat. The combat from the very beginning to the very end, I thought was tight. It was smooth. It was fun to get into these battles. All the different weapons you can get, from pistols to machine guns to laser weapons to grenade launchers. I was having so much fun when I would get into an area and have this combat, use my boost pack to fly up in the air, rain down some shots with the grenade launcher, get behind somebody with my shotgun, switch to my machine gun, and lay waste to everything. It was a blast. And you can mod your weapons, or you can take the weapons that fall from enemies, right? You can loot them. And the loot has tiers, common white. It has a blue tier, which is rare, purple, and then the gold for the legendaries. And each one of those, those weapons, like you can have a pistol, but you can make it your own because you can put up the seven mods on it. You know, I had a Maelstrom, one of the first weapons you'll come across in assault rifle. Pretty basic. But at one point, I eventually got one that had seven different mods on it with some legendary perks. One that set people on fire. One that basically shot out five shots at once. You could put a suppressor on it with a reflex scope, with a double barrel magazine. You can make the weapons your own and mod them to your heart's desire. So I had a ton of fun with the combat. And that was keeping me going in the beginning until the quest caught up with the combat. And the ship combat was pretty damn good too. I love getting into fights with the Crimson Fleet and taking out their ships or them coming at you three on one and somehow being able to take your energy from your missiles, put them into your shields to make them better. Do those sort of slight adjustments where you can make your laser stronger or perhaps you need to grab jump out of the way. All those sort of things are super cool. But then the perk tree has situations where you can unlock a targeting skill for your character and ship, which lets you target the engines. And oh boy, once I got that perk, I was knocking out the engines of every ship and boarding them. I would always do it on the last one if there was a fight. If there was two, I'd kill the first one, but the second one I would use the targeting lock, knock out their engines, board the ship, kill everybody on board, and 
take that ship for mine. I have like 10 ships in my fleet now of pretty good diversity of ships that I can call upon. I was having fun doing that. The music is absolutely incredible. Even when I was playing through the mediocre beginning of the game, I was just vibing to the score. And obviously Starfield at its core is a role-playing game, right? You don't speak, but you have a bunch of different choices for you to choose from, where you can kind of play the goody two-shoe, or maybe you want to play an asshole. It's your way. It's your character to play out how you want. And that's reflected in the perk systems, because you can set up your character to maybe be really good at combat or really good at ship stuff. There's there's 82 different perks. Each perk has four levels where if you want to go from level one to level two, you got to do a challenge. For instance, let's take lock picking. You unlock level one. To unlock level two, you have to complete five lock picking challenges. And then once you put the skill point into that, It'll be, hey, you're level two, but to unlock level three, now you need to complete 15. So your character and your build are going to be your own. I like persuading different characters in the game. So I maxed out persuasion right away. I maxed out the boost pack because I was having so much fun in combat. I maxed out security. I maxed out ballistics because I was just going in there murking everybody. But when you get into conversations, I sort of like to be the one that can talk someone out of attacking me or maybe give me something in return that I shouldn't have gotten. So that's how I built my character. How you build your character is going to be totally up to you. But that was my play style. Now one of the things that Starfield really has going for it is the type of missions that you come across and how it might be really unique to you. I'm going to give you an example where my Starfield experience started to change and it started to creep up from that 7 into the A territory and beyond. I had this mission. There's these terminals spread across the different worlds where you can just get random jobs. You can be a bounty hunter and take a job and go to a planet and take that person in. You can take a job to get rid of the Crimson Fleet. You can take a job to deliver crops to a different planet. So one of my first things I did in the game was I took a whole bunch of these quests and I had a whole bunch of other quests coming in. You'd be walking down the streets, you'd overhear a conversation, you did quests. I had like 25, 30 quests within the first five hours of the game and I was just like, I don't know what to do. So eventually I did one of the quests I had and I had to take this laser to a another planet, which I did. I landed on this planet, the quest completed, and it was done. I could easily have just left that planet and moved on, but the planet I landed on had a spaceport, a small spaceport attached to it, and I decided to get out and sort of explore. I went around talking to some of the people, ran a couple quests for them. They weren't really anything to speak of. It was just go here, put up some posters, go talk to these people. But one of the quests I ended up doing was for this bartender who sold this crate of beer to somebody that was now in this spaceship in orbit somewhere. And she wanted it back. So I'm like, cool, I'll go do that. And I found the spaceship. It was derelict, this huge ship. And circling it were two spacers. And immediately they see me with their ships. We get into a dogfight. I destroy them. I grab some of their loot. I dock with this derelict spaceship. And inside, there's a bunch of warnings going off, red lights. And the thing that happens that made this mission so cool. And when I talk to everybody else playing this game, only one other person had done this mission. I talked to 10 or 12 people. Nobody else besides one person had experienced this mission, which made it kind of a unicorn. During this mission, the gravity would turn on and then turn off. So you would be fighting the spacers on board and then suddenly you'd be floating in zero G and the enemies would be lifted in the air alongside all the loose objects on the ground. And that happened through the duration of the mission. I thought it was the coolest thing because it was the first time zero G was introduced to me in this game and they're using it in such a cool aspect that I was like, oh man, if they do more of this stuff in the future missions, wow, this game's gonna be something special. And that's where I started to turn and that the game started to be a lot better to me. And then I got into the Vanguard. I started to do the main missions. I'm a sci-fi nut. And what they did with the main mission was incredible. Now, some will say that they delve into some sci-fi tropes and they absolutely do. I read a lot of sci-fi novels and they absolutely do fall into some of those sci-fi tropes, but I wasn't expecting it. I was so invested in the story they were telling in the main mission that I would start thinking to myself, okay, how is this actually going to play out? I would go to bed thinking about, hmm, what are they trying to do here? And the missions kept on getting better. In fact, there's one mission here that I would argue is Bethesda's best mission 
they've ever done. So, so when I talked in the beginning about what I wanted out of Bethesda game, I wanted great quests. I absolutely got that. The Vanguard quest is awesome. Ryujin, really cool, gives you those morality choices. The Freestar Collective, the Crimson Fleet, really, really good. So I got those. What I wasn't expecting was an incredible main mission because normally those are throwaway, but this was the best for me out of everything in this game. Once it started going and I wanted some really good dialogue, I got that. I was immersed. I would just sit there immersed as the other characters would talk to me and I'd pick my responses because the voice acting and the writing was just that good. So I got what I wanted. I got my tight gunplay. I got my really good ship battles. But most importantly, I got that main story, that quest, those side missions, which is the reason I play these games in the first place. And I will say, coming to the end of what I wanted to talk about here, is I liked Bethesda's games. I like Fallout 3. I like Skyrim. But I will say definitively here, I love Starfield. I love it because of what it does with the sci-fi nature of the game. I love it because the quest had me engaged once I was able to find them and put aside the mediocre and slow beginning start. The overwhelming feeling I got of not knowing what to do and all the systems they throw at you and all the loading you had to go through to get what you want. I love Starfield and I love what they did here. Unfortunately, the game still has some problems. Like I mentioned, the loading thing is just so egregious. But we're talking about a game that started for me in the sevens to a game by the time I ended up 70 plus hours played, all the factions done, all that sort of stuff. Going into New Game Plus, which is so damn cool, it moved all the way up to a nine in my experience. I think I'm going to be the high end of reviews here for the most part. I think Metacritic will be a little bit lower than me, but I don't give a damn because it's about me first and foremost and my experience with this game. And I got exactly what I wanted from this and more. And you know the game is doing what it's supposed to when you honest to God feel those emotions. Like I'm telling you right here, playing through some of those quests, especially the main one, I was shocked at points. There was times I was completely surprised and I said, no effing way, I can't believe this. And by the end, I was just incredibly happy. I finished the game and I had the largest smile on my face and I said to myself, wow, Bethesda cooked, Todd cooked, this couldn't have gone any better. Thank you so much, Todd Howard, the teams at Bethesda for crafting this sci-fi experience. I didn't even know I wanted this until you gave it to me and it was more than I ever could have hoped for. Even if you use some old sci-fi tropes it doesn't matter because i love seeing it happen on screen what can i say nine out of ten for me but that main story and new game plus is a certifiable 10 out of 10 baby it exceeded all my expectations i got exactly what i wanted out of starfield anyways guys that's the review hope you enjoyed it let me know what you think about it in the comments below and as always thank you hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't and i'll see you in the next one later